Hi, in this video we're going to talk about a very common problem where if you're given an array like say minus 2, 11 and so on, find a subarray which contains the maximum sum. So there is a very good algorithm for this called cadence algorithm but it makes a makes one assumption and that is that then the array should contain at least one non-negative number. So let's try and solve that. Cadence algorithm and its time complexity is linear. So to use cadence algorithm, we have to consider just one concept and that is at every step of the iteration, we have to take in the maximum here or the maximum sum ending at that point of, of the iteration and the maximum sum that has been found so far. So if I had to define it mathematically, so I would say max so far would be the max of zero if it's a negative integer we do not want to keep it as a negative integer we want a positive sorry we want zero instead of a negative integer or max so far plus the element and the max uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is max here and max so far is max of max here and max so far. So that's pretty much it. So let's write the code first and then we can do a dry run and see how it exactly works. So let's take a one method say find max sum and we take the array of integers and we say int max here goes to zero int max so far equals to zero then we start the iteration or int i equals to 0, i less than error dot length, i plus plus 1. Now comes the interesting part. Um, as we know, max here is nothing but the max of 0 or max here plus error one right and max so far is nothing but the max of max so far and max here close the iteration and we close the loop and we return max so far which will contain the highest sum that is possible from this other so to know how it works let's do a small try run let's do a small try run so in the first we make three columns here one is our iteration second is max so far and third is max here. Right. So in the first iteration we have minus two. So max so far, or the max here is the bigger of zero or minus two, which is zero of course. And max so far still remains zero. Second iteration, max here we get eleven. So max here get becomes eleven and max so far the same. In the third iteration, 
you get minus 4 so max here becomes 7 max so far is still at 11 in the fourth iteration so you get 30 so 7 and 13 becomes 20 and so does max so far in the fifth iteration you get minus 5 and max here becomes 15 and max so far is still 20 in this last iteration sixth iteration this becomes 13 and this is still at 20 and as a result we get 20 which can be the which is the maximum that you can get so basically if you look at the input array all we did was we took this sub array and since that produced the maximum sum we printed out that sum in linear time now like we discussed before this algorithm has one small flaw and that is if there, is, there are no non-negative numbers it won't work and why is that that is primarily because of this line this line tells us that if it's a negative number bounce it to zero and that will be a good thing if everything is a negative if all the numbers are negative it will always be zero and we get a sum of zero always so in that case we make a small modification to the algorithm so instead of zero what can we put there so that we can get a negative sum but the maximum negative sum that is possible so let's say for one second let's forget that we have 11 and 13 so now the array is primarily filled with negative numbers only in that case if we say instead of zero let's take element there right let's instead of zero let's take element there if we do that what happens so in the first iteration max here is minus two so the maximum uh, so it becomes minus two let me see if i can find my space okay that becomes minus two and this is still um, so the initial we cannot do that right so in the initialization phase let's not say max so far is zero instead let's say max so far is a r of zero because if we say zero then of course we can never find the maximum it will always be stuck at zero like we discussed so so both are at minus two now what happens in the second case we get minus four so that becomes minus six uh, minus four and minus four minus plus minus two is minus six so that becomes minus four and this is still at minus two the third iteration we get minus 5 so that becomes minus 9 this is still minus 2 in the last iteration we get another minus 2 and that becomes minus 7 we still minus 2 so that is the sub array minus 2 of course as you can see since um, minus 2 is the highest that you can go in this sub array and we don't have anything else that we can add to it so that becomes more since all are negative numbers anywhere so our answer is minus two we can find that out intuitively and the algorithm gives out the same answer as well so there we have it that's getting this algorithm for you uh, brilliant guy and well thank you for watching